Hello everyone, I am Fajar Purnama, a master's student in the Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering from Kumamoto University. On this video, I would like to present a manuscript that I have written entitled RDIF and RSync Implementation on Moodle's Backup and Restore feature for course synchronization over the network which was written by me, my supervisor, the previous work done by Dr. Royana from Institute Technology School of November, and the fourth co-author Dr. Linawati from Udayana University. The manuscript was submitted to the IEEE Region 10 Symposium a conference which is held on uh, May 2016 and to be more accurate the presentation was done on the 9th of May 2016. The date here shows October 18, 2016 which is the date that this video was created. This is the outline of the presentation. We will start off from the introduction about e-learning online course, LMS Moodle, developing a course, then moving on to re related work about course sharing, issue of traditional course sharing, and course synchronization. We did some experiments. We will show the proposed course synchronization application and some scenarios of the experiment. Then we obtain the result it will show a demonstration of our application and we will show some measurement result. Finally, we will end this presentation in the conclusion and future work section. Starting on the introduction section, for those of you who doesn't know about e-learning, e-learning stands for electronic learning, which is the use of electronic devices in the learning and teaching process. The next slide is about online course, which is the main topic of this work. Online course is a part of e-learning. In conventional course, we, if you remember the old days, we meet in the classroom with our teacher, and then we will have a face-to-face -face teaching and learning and teaching process using a chalk and a blackboard. Different from the online course where everyone uses a computer device connected to the internet and follow the course from anywhere at any time. It can be followed at anywhere at any time. And most people manage their online learn online course with a system called learning management system. Learning management system can be referred to as software with a system that can manage online learning and teaching process. On this work, we use Moodle for our experiment. This is uh, some snapshot of Moodle for the students. Here we show that they can read materials. They can follow quizzes they can join discussions, they can submit assignments. On the teacher side, uh, on the teacher side, the teacher have a flexibility, flexibility, they can return feedbacks at their leisure time, and with all the students' activity recorded on the system, it is easier to monitor. To monitor. However, there is an issue of developing a course, which is not so easy developing a course. Some contents may only correctly be written by professors. Through experience, can a person develop a well-designed and written course, but also takes time to gain those experience, not to mention developing a course afterwards. Now, here are some related works. 
that the course sharing was proposed to address this issue the issue of developing a course course sharing as one of the solutions so ever since the term massive open online course was introduced they came with the idea of why not share these courses this MOOC was one of the triggers where courses are open for countless particip participants to enroll online it's one of the solutions to the issue of developing a course by oneself so on this snapshot is a, a snapshot of the website model.net on this site we can get courses we can share use them freely and distribute to others without restriction and also we can share our course on this site as well and if we want to share our course we can back up our course using a Moodle's course and backup and restore feature Moodle had a feature to reuse course on other site, which is this one. The course can be backup into a .mbz format archive, and that is what it is downloaded on the course sharing on Moodle.net. The major features Moodle can backup restore are the flexibility to set the information contained on the backup, whether they are including user information or not, or including all contents or just certain contents. Although the course sharing issue have, although that the course sharing method have addressed the issue of developing a course by oneself, afterwards there is another issue. Well, this course sharing may may not be so effective if the authors keep on revising their courses. So the issue is that authors constantly revision their course revise their courses in order to perfect their course and this thing occurs especially in formal education system like university schools and related and if and if the authors tends to constantly revising their scores for us as the subscriber we have to download every time the course is revised so in other words like in the computer we have to copy and we have to copy and replace the existing file meaning that we download the revised course and we have to throw away the outdated course and yeah download the new one on this figure it is shown that the first course was a 16 megabyte data of course contents the subscribers will first download 16 megabyte and next time the authors revise the course from 16 megabyte of data to 28 megabyte of data and the subscribers will have to download the 28 megabyte of course data and we of course we throw away the old 16 megabyte of course data and if we will if we as the subscribers want to keep up with the revision we have to keep constantly downloading the new the whole new course data so next after the 20 megabyte was is revised to 30 megabyte we have to throw away the 28 megabyte of course data and download the 30 megabyte of course data and this can go on 
for infinitely depends on how much the authors want to revise the course and as you see that the more the authors revise the course the size of the course itself gets larger and if we keep on doing this it will be very heavy on the network and so the third quarter as I said before Dr. Royana he proposed a course synchronization which is specifically to address this constant rev revision issue so we already have the previous version of the of the course why not just update that course or in other words why not just uh, if we already have the previous course data why not just uh, download the revised part only no need to download the whole course over and over again so on this figure we first download the 16 megabyte of course and then the author revised the course from 16 to 28 megabyte we already have 16 megabyte and instead of downloading the whole 28 megabyte why not we just download the revised part only and update our course this proved to be very efficient if the revision is not so much for example from 28 megabyte to 30 me to 30 megabyte we only need to download 2 megabyte of data if we, on if we already have 28 me megabyte compared to the previous slide without using any defined method we need to download the whole 30 megabyte even though we already have 28 megabyte of course 30 megabyte to 2 megabyte of download if it's a huge difference and eventually it will be very efficient on the network and the course synchronization was uh, identify the difference between the databases and the directories then send the difference and update the current course this is a snapshot of the application written by Dr. Royana this is the master console and this is the slave console and this is for a small demonstration that before synchronization we only have a news forum activity module and if we click the sync link or the sync button here we can get the the rest of the module on the rest of the course contents although the related work section already explained that about course synchronization but and it looks like that everything is finished but there are actually many challenges to course synchronization which will start which is the starting of this work the main challenge is that is addressed on this work is the compatibility issue that the this application is only applicable or only work technically for Moodle version of 1.9 now Moodle is currently on version 3.x and Moodle version 1.9 is scarcely used and whenever the Moodle version increases uh, the application will no longer be compatible the the next challenge is the flexibility issues where whether we want to include user information or not and maybe 
we don't want to uh, synchronize or get the whole course contents maybe only the only a part of the course contents and these features are available are available in Moodle's course and backup and restore feature and so moving next to the experience section we propose another model of a course synchronization the reason why the previous model was facing a compatibility issue is because it also handles the database and the directories of the model itself it works by identifying the difference between database and the directories then send the difference and update current course so as Moodle version changes the database and the directory have a high chance of changing as well its structure changes and so which makes why the application can no longer be compatible but on this new model if we return the database and the directory handling back to the Moodle then we will no longer face that compatibility issue so this new model is kind of, of a new way of doing a single or doing a course synchronization is that we rely on the internal feature of the model itself which is backup and restore feature for both master and slave side to output the course content into a backup file or a backup archive and then our application only handles the synchronization between the two backup archive or in other words the synchronization only handle finding the difference between the two course contents the synchronization for between the two backup files we use a we use a file synchronizer a file synchronization which is mainly about a patch mechanism and for the file synchronization we implement our diff a control tulsing algorithm application overall we have a backup previous or which is the outdated 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 or the old backup file and here on the master side we have the latest course or the new backup file we will refer this for old backup file and the new backup file so what happened is, is the the old what happened is that to some process we will update the backup file into the new backup file identical to the one on the master side in detail on first the slave side will use our diff to generate the signature of the old backup file which is the signature is a bundle of checksum of weak and strong checksum then the slave side will send a signature to the master side and the master side will use our diff to we use our diff on the we use our diff of the signature to the new backup file to generate a delta or a patch file which is the difference between the new backup file and the old backup file the RDIF calculate the difference by calculating the weak and the strong checksum between the signature and the latest backup um, file on oh, oh, the new backup file sorry 
so we first calculate the weak checksum whether if the if both uh, whether if uh, both contents here are identical if they are identical it will verify again with using a strong checksum if it's identical then leave the file as it is but if it's different then it output and then put that different content into the delta file and in the end all the difference that is found between the new file and the old file will be in the patch or the delta file and then the delta file is sent back to the slave side and our div will patch the old backup file with the patch file or the delta file creating the new backup file identical to the one on the master side the the delta or the patch file con contains instructions of whether to to remove to remove file that exists that exists on the old backup file but is but it doesn't exist on the new backup file and it will contain to and it also contains of adding instruction to add new contents which exists on the new backup file which is doesn't exist on the old backup file and finally the it contains the an instruction to modify a file which is found to be or the which is found that it had that the data on the old backup file has been modified on the new file other way it will generate a uh, new backup file identi identical to the master size and we do the experiment on our course on our own created course which has three sections and then the first section is the computer programming the second section is computer network and the third section is uh, penetration testing each of these section has a course material has a discussion forum assignments and it has uh, yeah it has the four at least the four uh, activity that was introduced on the introduction section for the experiment we do seven scenario the first scenario is without using the synchronization method where we have to download the whole course content wholly which the size is around 29 to 1 megabyte which is roughly 30 megabyte the second content we call it a large content synchronization but it's a synchronization where on the slave side have one section out of the three section which is out of the three section which it's supposed to have the third scenario is the slave side have two out of three sections and the fourth scenario it has three out of three sections but what happens if on the master side we had a very small data here is a link to uh, to a random URL on the fifth scenario is a small modification where a context on a context somewhere on the course we change here 60% to 40% and 100 to 80% this is a very small change or revision on the sixth scenario we did nothing but we only changed the order of the section 
And on the seventh scenario, nothing change. What happens if we do synchronization on this scenario? And then we have the result section. And on this, with on the first. Now on the first slide of the result section, we would like to show a demonstration of the application. This is a console, a beta console written in PHP. Both sides uploads their backup archive. So here is still manual though. We can see that both sides have uploaded their course backup archive. The one on the slave LMS have the old backup file which is 16 megabyte and the master side have a new backup file which is 30 megabyte. And then the next and no before that we go to the settings which we define the masters URL from the slave side. And the next course of action the slave LMS will press the update button. It will first generate the signature of the old backup file or the backup archive around 96 kilobyte and then the slave site will send that backup we will send that signature file to the master site and uh, then the master site use the signature file to the to its own backup course course to, it, to its own course backup file and generate a delta or a patch file then it will send that patch file to the slave site and the slave site will use that patch to patch the its then to patch its old backup file and generating the new backup file identical to the master to the master's backup file and then we also conduct some experiments of net of network traffic here are some measure uh, here are network usage of the synchronization. Here are some measurement results. We conduct the experiment on three different network: a virtual machine, local network, and a public network. The seven colors uh, shows the seven scenarios. The blue one is without synchronization then the large content synchronization where we have one out of three of course contents and medium content synchronization we have two out of three contents and small content synchronization where we synchronize only the small link that was added on the master side a small modification where we change some percentage some text on the context and the change order scenario where we change the order of the course section and finally the seven scenario which is no change at all uh, here we have we use two application for the synchronization we compare them the first one is our diff the second one is our diff dear the difference is that our diff directly synchronize the archive in other words it synchronize the dot mbz directly this one or in other words if you're not familiar with the, uh, the dot mbz it synchronize the compressed file directly like the dot zip or dot rar or the dot r dot gz and etc. On the other hand, rdiffdir recursively synchronize the file. rdiffdir dives into the backup archive inside the compressed file 
and it, ident it identifies what is inside the archive file and then there's and then it synchronizes the file one by one recursively it the rdiv dir goes deeper where the rdiv only do, do, does it directly without going inside the archive itself we found different result though before showing the detail of the result the overview of the result is that that using this method using this uh, course synchronization method we have um we will have a more uh, efficient network usage compared to without using a synchronization now on the receiving side or the download side here is the here is the download how much the slave LMS needed to update from the master side so without using the synchronization the slave side we have to download the whole file which is around 30 uh, 30 megabyte and using our there we get the ideal result where when there is a large content synchronization where there is a large revision on on the course it downloads a large amount of file but still it is not as much as downloading the whole course and uh, next the rest of the scenarios is a very small revision like we need to get only one section of the content we only need to get a link and we will need to get when there is only like a two or a three character change on the course and finally if we only change the order of the course which these are very small revision and is expected that not much downloading occurs and as we expected that we don't need to download as much we don't need to download much during when there is only a small revision and therefore we can conclude that using a synchronization is very efficient on the network using RDIF on the other hand is still efficient though but not efficient as we expected of course that on the of course that the here it is showed that even though that the fourth to the sixth scenario there is only a small revision but we still get a high downloading which is 20 megabyte which it should be somewhere below 5 megabyte ideally by using our diff we get a quite a high traffic however it still re however it still reaches our goal which using the synchronization method even though it is unexpectedly high is still more efficient than without using the synchronization we can only for now we can only hypot hypothesize that our diff cannot accurately measure the difference between the old file and the new file of the archive because it doesn't dive directly inside the archive while rdiv dir it goes inside the backup archive or backup file and it synch it synchronize each file within the backup file uh, within the within the backup archive recursively and so it can more accurate 
calculate the difference between the old and the new file. And on the on another topic about the uplink, the uplink is the the uplink is uh, the uplink is uh, influenced clearly influenced by the signature file, meaning that how much we need to send to the master side. If you go back to this figure, the uplink is some is the size of the signature that we need to send to the master, and the downlink is how much the patch that we need to download from the master side. And the result shows that the uplink is from a couple of megabyte to one megabyte which is not much though for using our diff the virtual on a virtual machine and local network is mm, almost the same but on a public network it shows a uh, higher traffic compared to this one which means that we can see that the on a public network is not as clear as the local in the field, all on the local network and the filter machine and roughly it is about 96 kilobyte which is the size of the signature that is need to be sent For after 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 if there though the size of the signature uh, is not the same for every synchronization. For using our diff the signature size is almost the same, but for our diff there, as I said before, that it can it is more accurate, and the size of the of the signature is different to each to each uh, scenario here without the synchronization we only send a request to the we only send a request to the master site to download the whole course content so without the synchronization there shouldn't be any there shouldn't be almost any uplink only a request but when well, but during a large content synchronization a signature is produced roughly around 0 0.6 might not be this much this is also mixed to the network and we can see that from this uh, figure that from that the size of the signature increased to the scenario hmm. though this is kinda like not really the scope of our work though but we can show that the figure is like this our main discussion is on the on the fourth figure where without synchronization shows a high amount of traffic and if using a synchronization we can reduce the traffic the, the, the download traffic because we don't need to download the whole file but only download the revised part And lastly, to, decode, to discuss this uh, measurement result slide, the said there is the seventh scenario where there is no change. 
when there is no change uh, there is roughly almost any downlink there is almost no downlink when there is no change during the uh, when there is no change between the two course file for the uplink we only send the uplink only send a request so it's kind of expected to have uh, a uplink but even though it's not really much only to a couple of kilobyte okay they reach to one megabyte though but it's not really much and now finally we can go to the conclusion and the future work section of the slide the conclusion is we get efficiency com we the conclusion is that we can that the application maintains the efficiency and but it is compatible and flexible like the previous course synchronization application this paper's course synchronization method also shows network efficiency as explained on the previous result section slide. Though the advantage of this though the advantage of this new course synchronization model or application it's the compatibility it's compatible is compatible to all version of Moodles compatible to all version of Moodle since it uses the existing feature in Moodle. This is explained on the experiment side of the course synchronization model that, that we show that this using this model is guaranteed that to work on all version of Moodle and if you have forgotten the previous application only works for Moodle version 1.9 unintentionally we get the flexibility on our coursing on the on our course synchronization application this may not be this is unintentionally to be honest is because we use the course backup and restore feature which is already quite flexible that the application also gain a flexibility feature since the course and backup and restore feature we can include for example we can whether want to include user information or not anonymize user information and we can we want to we can either synchronize the whole course content or just a part of the course content we can choose by using this Moodle course backup and restore feature where previously we well on the previous course application we only synchronize the whole course content without actually choose without actually the ability to choose what information we want to synchronize but for the both uh, both challenges mentioned in this conclusion and the future work and introduction section both of them has not yet been fully demonstrated on this paper so in the future work we will like to demonstrate and also further develop the application to be compatible with all other LMS this one works only for Moodle and on the next future work we would like to work on application to be compatible with all LMS such as uh, Sakai or Pigno, Blackboard or maybe EDX and there are other 
LMS other than Moodle that in that university that other university use and thank you and any comments or questions and I would like to apologize if the presentation is quite complicated on a future work we would like to make a more simpler presentation and thank you very much